So now here I am with these two birds thinking, wow, these birds just are not what I thought they were to each other. Hello, my fellow snippers and flighters. My name is Marlene McCohen. This is Nellie mumbling beside me. This is Monty. And today we are going to be doing an update video on Nellie and Monty. But before I get into that, I want to do a shout out to Caitlin Martinez, who sent me a beautiful letter. And I want to thank you for it because it honestly made my day. So thank you so much, Caitlin. Now, you guys know that this is an update update on Nellie and Monty, but what you guys don't know is that I'm going to be answering your questions on Nellie and Monty that you asked me in Instagram, so I'm going to try to cover everything and stay tuned. You may be one of the questions and one of the people that gets a shout out. Really. Now there's so much to say about Nellie and Monty that I don't even know where to begin. So I'm just gonna begin with how I got them for those of you who are new here. And then I'm gonna tell you about their characters and then I'm gonna go into everything else, including your questions. It's kind of a sad story. What happened is I lost my mustache parakeet, Picasso. Picasso is honestly my favorite bird. I know there are no favorites, but I just had like, not only did I have a special connection with Picasso, but I just, I don't know. He's just the best bird in the entire world. And I was really heartbroken. I obviously put posters and information everywhere online and in my local area. And I got a phone call from a lady saying, hey, I have a bird, would you like to take mine? And now like that's, obviously that's not what I was about and I'm not trying to get birds or trying to have birds. I quite frankly have enough birds. And like I said before, I never want any more birds, but I always want more birds, but I don't like, meaning like I always have the heart for them, but I really just don't need any. But what I was afraid of was that these birds needed help because why would someone just be like, hey, do you want my birds? Long story short, you guys could watch the whole story. I'll put a link below, but long story short, she was sick and I didn't know she had two birds and she got really sick, didn't know what she had, and she wanted to find a home for them. When I went to pick up Nellie and Monty, she was actually a great bird owner. She had these birds, they're very loving, and she's just very sick and couldn't take care of them. So I brought them home to find a home for them. Now there's something really important I wanna tell you guys about finding a home for birds. And I also wanna put a disclaimer in. I do not like to promote any kind of animal hoarding in any way. I don't want you to ever think of me as the person that like gets animals for videos. I really don't care. As you guys know, I don't care about any of that. I care about the birds. One day I hope to be able to have a sanctuary and or help another sanctuary and just, I had been starting to think about that in terms of being able to help birds on a larger scale, at least because I know that I am a good person for birds to come to, so I'd probably be a good person for birds to come through, if you know what I mean, because then I would be in charge of where birds go and making sure that they do get great homes. But I've learned a lot about that with Nellie and Monty, and that's why I feel like this video is very important. For those of you who have absolutely no attention span and want quick answers, I mean, really, if you wanna learn anything, you gotta pay attention because you don't know where the information that I give you in this video is going to be beneficial to you. And I'm gonna tell you a lot right now, not just about Nellie and Monty, but also about rehoming birds and what's important and my discoveries with them along the way. The first thing I wanna tell you guys about them that I discovered is about their personalities. I call Nelly, kind of like narcissist Nelly. I think that Nelly, if she was a person, she would be a very glamorous actress with a boa. Do you see her over here, like upside down? She's like, yes, yes. She just does everything for love. And then when you pet her head, she just closes her eyes and talks to you. And she like flaunts herself in front of Monty. Monty is the jealous, grumpy old man. When they came to us, I only had one cage for them and that didn't work out so well. I mean, as a general rule, I always wanna make sure that every bird has its own 
cage. I don't care how much you want the birds to bond. I mean, unless you're trying to breed birds, which is a whole different thing. I think birds really need to have their own territory. And I think Monty was pretty upset because you know, she got the cage. And so I just see him as like this grumpy little bird that's like, she got the house, she got the car, she got the love, and now she's off getting attention from everyone else. Right, Monty? Yes, I know. He's, he's like, the more you watch them, the more you'll see. So the first thing I want to tell you guys and teach you guys is the importance of uh, the rehoming process. A lot of you write to me and say, I want to adopt a bird but they have to do a house check I find that offensive listen guys at this point and at any point in my stage with birds if I wanted to give you a bird I would do a house check too because I have connected with the bird I feel responsible for the bird maybe you aren't as instinctual with parrots as I am and I might go in there and realize that you have crazy cat or an extra large dog that you're just not prepared to handle with the birds or I may go to your house and you know find other dangers that you might not be aware of or I might go to your house and find too many birds many things that I think any person rescuing animals owes it to the birds that they're taking care of to investigate that's the first thing I want to let you know the second thing I want to let you know is that even if you intend on rehoming a bird it's very different from dogs and cats people are familiar with dogs and cats there's lots of information to go around dogs and cats are extremely domesticated birds Birds are only two generations removed from the wild, they have a certain amount of unpredictability and us as humans, we really have to bend to the way they are a lot of times. You can't expect birds to just be these perfect little beings the way dogs can be. I mean, I'm not generalizing, I'm just saying. So it's very important to understand that before you rehome an animal like a bird, you really want to take some time with the birds. And in this case, with two of them, this has been a lot harder of a diagnosis because you're working with two animals that you don't know if they should be together or shouldn't be together if they're better apart or better together and that can take a long time to figure out and make a real good decision that you're confident in and I'm gonna go through this and I'm gonna prove to you why when you're rehoming birds it should take a lot longer than just like hey, I have a cat does anyone in the neighborhood want it um oh you'd be a good home cool or perfect and of course I give all animals respect I wouldn't just give a cat or a dog to somebody but for the most part we're dealing with a very small amount of people in the world comparatively that understand and can deal with birds most birds when they get rehomed they come right back to the shelter or the rescue. So that's why people do these things. After meeting Rose from Parrots First and really just seeing how often these birds do come back, it's just the saddest thing. It's just like you're in a position of seeing over years and years and years how many birds come back to you and the amount is just frightening. So I understand why all these rescues do things the way they do and you really should go out and volunteer and support a local sanctuary sanctuary or rescue anyone that you can if you love birds even for the price of coffee I think these things are very important so let's get into Nellie and Monty that's why I've had them for such a long time and of course I do love them a lot and a lot of you are asking me if I'm planning on rehoming them and we'll get to your questions from Instagram in a little bit let's talk a little bit on a technical level of how I came to certain conclusions and changed my mind with these birds birds over the time that I've had them. So when they first came to me, I was told that they are maybe about eight years old. The lady who had them had them for four years. The lady who had them before that had them for four years. So they're guessing that these birds are about eight years old. I was also told that they're fine together in one cage. And I was told that Nellie, when the only clear thing that she says is Nellie neglected. And she'll say that sometimes when she feels like she's been left alone, which is absolutely heartbreaking. After I brought them home, obviously they were in a new situation. They were extremely hypersensitive. I bonded with them. You'll see in the video, both George and I spent time with the birds and they seem to be kind of okay in the same cage. But one thing you have to know is really important. When birds experience change or trauma, they're going to behave a lot differently than when they get their confidence later on and start feeling comfortable. They're 
going to be quieter in some cases, and in some cases they'll be much more aggressive and territorial. But in these cases, these two seem to be pretty well with each other because they're both in a process of change. So they're both in the same cage and they're both doing a pretty good job. Now another thing that she told me was that they were both very loving birds, but I saw she would always pick the birds up with a tool. Like when she would have them step up, she always had a stick or a toy that she used. I guess, I don't know if she was scared that they were gonna bite, but again, I don't need that. And she's had them for four years and I really don't need anything like that to pick them up unless they are fighting with each other, which we'll get to. So these two birds were in the same cage. As far as I knew, everything was fine. My intent right away was to find another cage for them because that's just how I do things with my birds, as I told you. So that was my plan. Some of you might have seen a comment about somebody who had the birds for a few days, and I want to tell you about that too. So these two birds were in quarantine from my other birds because obviously I don't know if they had any diseases or anything like that. Usually when you get older birds from somebody who's had them for a very long time and they're not sick, they're usually fine, but she had something that she didn't know what she had. And even though West Nile is not contagious, we didn't know what she had at the time. Later on, we found out that she did indeed have West Nile, which is not contagious to birds or even other people. Birds can get West Nile if they were, let's say, if they were bitten by a mosquito, but that's a whole different thing. So they were in a process of quarantine and there was a point during their quarantine when I had to go away for a few days very, very quickly after, probably within a week. I think we went away um, for the weekend for something. I don't remember what it was, but I couldn't have somebody watch my birds, which is usually Georgia's mom, she's amazing, and these birds and leave any room for error. So I had somebody babysit them both of the birds, and they had a lot of kids. They had four girls, their family friends, and I did say, like, if you think you like the birds because you were in there really good with animals and interested in birds, and the father had had birds before, if you do think you are interested in them, you know, let me know, but let's just see how this goes. When I came to pick them up, the birds were really excited to see me. Nellie was in her carry-on, and she told me that she had been neglected, which she hadn't been neglected neglected by them. There were so many beautiful videos of them hanging out with Nelly, but apparently she felt neglected by me. And before that, when I had dropped them off, I was there for hours and hours just checking to make sure that they were okay. And I noticed that Nelly was getting very cage territorial and Monty wasn't feeling comfortable sleeping. When I came back, I made it my priority to put them in separate cages because right away I realized that they started getting aggressive towards each other. Now, here's some of the reasons they could have been aggressive towards one another. One, they could have always had some aggression issues towards each other and jealousy issues, but when they moved to a new spot, they were chilled out. And what's the reason for her giving me only one cage? Maybe it was that she wanted to use the other cage because she told me that when she got them, they each had their own cage for a bird in the future. So that was my theory at the time. I thought, this is very interesting. Thing. These birds are not getting along. Whenever I hang out with them like this, they would attack each other. Nellie would go up, antagonize him, and they would be rumbling, and I'd have to separate them, and it was very, very alarming because often somebody would get bit. So now here I am with these two birds thinking, wow, these birds just are not what I thought they were to each other because when they came, you saw them in the video, they were nice and docile to one another, they got along, they called each other if they were in different rooms, and I was just like, this is not making sense. So either they were just chilling because they were hypersensitive in a new area, or when they both got bonded to me, I entered into the relationship like a triangle. So even if they aren't bonded breeding birds, they're bonded as friends, as a flock that flies together, and now I'm here, and they're fighting for my attention. So I've kind of ruined the dynamic. So every time one is near me and the other's near me, they get jealous, like if you give one attention more than the other. And I started noticing that to be true, but I couldn't figure out who 
was the aggressor because it looked like it was Nelly at first, then it looked like it was Monty, then it went back to Nelly, and then I just realized they both just kind of taunt each other. But Nelly is more like an old actress. She like goes over to Monty and acts cute like she's gonna be cute, and then she just like after 10 minutes like goes for him and then they go for each other. So then I came to the conclusion that they cannot be together at all. And Monty, I put his cage upstairs in my room and Nellie, she stayed in the office to like go through this quarantine. And Monty was getting a lot of good attention because I would wake up and there was Monty and I could really bond with him. The thing with Nellie and Monty, I realized later is that part of the issue is that Nellie is that girl that's like, oh here, come here, love me, love me. And he's always kind of pushed to the side, left to be misunderstood. Monty is misunderstood because he wants love, but she's in the forefront always stealing love, which you can imagine how frustrating that would be. So me having alone time with Monty, I realized how amazing he was. And if you guys watch my Instagram, you would see that I would say, wings, Monty. I taught him all these tricks and he would put his wings up and he just was the cutest bird. Every time I brought them together, they wanted to kill each other. I mean, I could didn't even have them eat off the same plate. It was just disaster. So I started seriously thinking about separating them. What if Monty went to a home where he got a lot of attention and love? And what if Nellie went to a home where she got a lot of attention and love? And Monty and I really started bonding and I think that was good for our relationship. And Nellie and I, we weren't bonding as fast as Monty and I, but Nellie bonds faster in general. So right away she would hug and love me and when I would go downstairs she would go hi Nelly which I love and she would dance yeah, you see, she's just like a really loving bird. So it's easy to love her. Monty was more of the bird that you break the mold. And when you break that wall down, you just feel so good because you know you like connected with somebody who needed to connect. But do you see how she is? She's up here and he's just chilling. And he loves, he loves love too. But look, he's going to be a little bit like offended that he's getting secondhand love, you know? Like you could see it in his face. I don't know if you guys could see it. Come here. His little face. Who is a little face with his big little big ears? Oh, you're such a sweet baby. So I started thinking about possibly homing them separately, but in the back of my mind, I was just like, that just does not seem right because they've been together all this time, albeit I thought that maybe they had been in separate cages, obviously, because together they were not getting along. Like, she wouldn't let him sleep or anything. I mean, it's so rare the way we live here in the United States. I know other countries have other laws about birds always being bonded, but it's too late for that here. So um, just the way you go to a bird store and if you get get one bird, the chances of you even finding another one are rare because it has to be from another breeder so they can be bonded. So it's very hard, especially with my birds being rescued. See, he's mad now. To have the chance of these two birds that are kind of friends, I really didn't want to separate them. So quarantine was over and I brought both of them down into my kitchen to be part of the entire flock. And I should say that a lot of the ways I get my birds to bond with one another, for Nelly, for example, to get along with Leo or Jersey, is at night I'll take these showers and I put all of them up on top of the shower. And generally at night birds are a little more tired and they get a little less aggressive because they don't have the patience to be territorial. They're just, they're a little easier to work with when they're at tiny bit tired, just like a little bit of a trick. So they just go up there and they feel like they're in the rainforest and I'll put them together. But I didn't put these two together because that didn't end well. But I would put Nellie in between like Leo and Jersey and just after a while it's like they get over themselves because they're just too tired. They just sit there and they enjoy like the mist and they learn that they're not aggressive towards each other. Because before that I couldn't even put these guys on a stand with Leo. He would be so mad about it. Leo can be a little bit territorial. But after you know them showering together, Nellie was able to get along with both Leo and Jersey. Monty would still be a little of the aggressor, so he was in a separate spot on a little stand in the shower next to me. Anyway, 
anyway, once these cages were out together, at first they were very aggressive and occasionally would rumble, but I had the two cages together next to each other and now they just sit on top of the cages, go visit other birds in the cages, and they really don't fight at all. I've had them since, I, I can't do the math this quick, but I, I don't know, it must be, I like, I don't even know what month it is now, but I know I've had them since before Thanksgiving. So, I mean, I've had these birds months and months and it took me this long to really see their characters, have their characters grow, see who is upsetting who, who gets along with what bird. And I could have made a mistake if I would have just given them up too quickly. They could have gotten depressed because they would have missed one another. They could have not done well if I would have just given them to somebody in the same cage. So there's a lot to, yeah, see, like he's pretty upset because he's next to me right now and he doesn't want her to come into the picture and ruin his like closeness with me. So these are things that take a while to understand and they are important, but they are really funny birds. Nellie talks a lot. She says, hi, Nellie. She says, Nellie. She says, no. Like, I'll be like, are you a naughty bird? She'll go, no. Oh, yeah. And he says Nelly. They both laugh. Nelly makes like <laughs> noises. They can bite. They bite a little bit sometimes if, you know, they're overtired or overstimulated or if you get in the middle of whatever nonsense they're fighting about. Now I'm going to go to some questions from Instagram, okay? And if you guys have any more questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments because I'm sure I could do another update video on them and their personalities. The first question is from Jana Harn 98 are they ready to go to their forever home at this point? I think they are ready now that I know that they should go to a home together, but it's gonna be hard to find them a home where somebody is skilled enough to bond with both of them individually, hang out with both of them, and understand all their quirks and what makes them mad, and that they may bite. And another thing about them, do you hear that voice? Like, not my favorite bird sounds in the world. Like, sure, they're not as loud as, let's say, if Rocky screams, it can, like, pierce your soul. But the shrill voice of Senegal's is, is something to get used to. It really is. Are you angry? Are you angry? So yes, I think they are ready because I'm ready with the right information. Jazzy48, why are they so cute? I have no idea. They're just the cutest, most loving, sweetest birds. Vithio says, are you gonna keep them or will you rehome them? So I know I kind of just touched on this right now, but I do think because I took them intending to rehome them. And it's really important for me that you guys know that I don't just wanna keep every single bird in the world, although I do love every bird in the world deeply. I think I can find, you see? I think I can find, now he's mad. Come here, come here, baby, it's okay. What's she doing to you? See, I need to find someone that understands this and can deal with these emotions that they have towards one another and giving them both attention. Karen Bernard wants to know who is most social. Nellie is by far the most social bird, but she's also the most obsessed obsessed with me, like obsessed. One time, do you guys remember Heather from the African Grey video? One time she came over and I just wanted to see about her bonds with the birds. I don't know why I never posted this video. We went over so many things with them. Like she asked me a lot of questions. I think I never posted it because obviously it was still around the time that Picasso was missing and I was very overwhelmed and it's, it, this is kind of weird, but for every video you see, I probably have three you don't see just because I couldn't get it up. So that's why I have a Patreon now. If you guys ever want to support me getting out more videos or more timely videos, then that just helps me pay an editor to get info out to you guys sooner because sometimes editing these videos takes a whole day. Angel Coco and wants to know how old they are. Well, I would assume that since the owners had them four years and four years and there wasn't any previous 
info on them that they're probably about eight years old. But, you know, there are some features that they have that, in, especially in Monty, that makes me think he, I wouldn't be surprised if he was older. So unfortunately with rescues, you don't always know everything about them. Here, now they're getting like fighting for my attention. You can tell they're getting a little angry towards one another. And Monty's angry because she's trying to show off our connection and he is feeling left out. And the problem with Nelly is she's so loving and easy to love that he could get pushed aside very easily. So it's very important that whoever they go to know this. Henry Rika wants to know, other than each other, what birds do they seem to like most in the flock? Well, I think Nelly is pretty good with Jersey. They're on the same stand. Jersey's pretty nice to all of the birds. That's what I really love about Jersey. As far as like their relationship with Vinny, Vinny just kind of does Vinny and ignores them. But Leo can get very jealous of them. But Nelly, see, this is what's happening now, you know? Like this is what made me for a time think they can't even be together. But I learned that they can. Aww. See, like in this situation, if I didn't have the phone, like she would need her head scratched so she doesn't go over and antagonize him because what she's saying is like, I'm not getting all the head scratches. I'm not getting all the love. I need so much love. I need so much attention. I must get rid of him. But then other times when they're together and I'll see, like if I don't scratch her head, she'll start going over to bother him. Diana G. Gomez wants to know, if you could keep one, which one would you keep? Ugh. At first, I thought this would be Monty because I just love Monty so much much he's the sweetest look I'm scared him hearing me but then like I would get so excited to hear Nellie's voice in the morning going hi Nellie and I just can't choose one because it would just break my heart having one over the other Nellie gets along better with the other birds in a way she's a little less aggressive Monty can be kind of aggressive towards other birds if he wants to be in his spot so I guess I'd have to say Nellie but I don't want to because honestly he's the cutest. I gotta read this out. Hick 3421. Are you going to sell them? No, 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 no. If I rehome them, maybe a rehoming fee. That's another thing that I learned is like rehoming fees are important because when people feel like they just got things, they feel like they could just give up things. And um, birds are not things. They're little souls. You know, now I'm happy to pay rehoming fees if I ever wanted a bird because I just want to show you that like I will take care of it. But in general, I'm never going to be in the business of selling or breeding or anything like birds. But I don't knock any of that either because I don't knock breeders at all because they know, a lot of breeders know and love their birds. And a breeder could be your best friend if your bird is sick or you need to know something. Just don't ever forget that. Same with bird stores. But yes, do I promote adopting? Absolutely. Are my birds rescues? Absolutely. But generally, the parrot world, they can make themselves dramatic for no reason. For me, it's all about all of us just loving birds and taking care of them and spreading awareness. Cashy Red Panda, what are their favorite things? Oh, well, Nellie's favorite thing is love and herself. She just loves to like flaunt herself. Monty, he likes um colorful beads. You're okay, you're okay, you're loved too, you're loved. Monty has a huge insecurity that you'd have to deal with and it's hard to deal. It's like the younger sibling that like has a superstar older sibling. I don't know. Monty really needs a lot of love and a lot of affirmation. Monty, he likes toys. He likes these like little circular wood pieces that I got for him. ZDJ606 says, do you have a home lined up for them? So I have someone that is very interested in the birds and I think they actually would be a really good home. I just want to have a few more conversations with them about this and how they behave, how they could bite, and always want to make sure that they know all the negatives. They have birds, so it's not something that they aren't familiar with, but dealing with a relationship between two birds is very different, so hopefully I could find the perfect person for them. Aliana66 says, why do they want to kill each other? So just to clarify, two very good reasons. One, either that they both love me and try to get my attention and fighting for it, or they're both upset that I'm the new mate for each other. Does that make sense? 
sense. Like, I feel like Monty feels that way, obviously. CamBam99 says they want to know everything. So I hope this has been a lot of everything about them. See how he came to sit next to me? He's such a sweet bird. Byron Floyd wants to know if they're very one person bonded like his bird. Mm, yeah, they are actually. Nelly, like as friendly as she is and as friendly as she was when we got her and she was hypersensitive and open, now you put her on anyone and she's like, that's nice. Marlene, Marlene, Marlene. Very, very obviously. Very obviously. Yeah. So, yeah, they are. Aaron 091220000 wants tips for taming two bonded birds like Nelly and Monty, but untamed. <laughs> This is a really hard thing to do. The first thing you're gonna need to do is separate them, for taming at least. And you probably would wanna look into getting them their own cage to be, you know, in as well. So it's really hard to tame two birds that are bonded, but you gotta work with one at a time away from the cage and away from their territory. That's the best place to start. Bobo the Amazon parrot says, how long do you keep them together? Well, they're just kind of, their cages are open. So they have two cages next to each other and they're just open for them to hang out or not hang out. I think they like it better that way because they're making, they're not forced to be on. See, she's coming closer and he's mad. This is because I'm in the equation. But when they're alone on their cage, or on top of both their cages, they're doing better. So yeah, there's no limit of time. I just leave all the birds out to hang out. Naomi Parrot One wants to know, what do they eat? Well, they have a pellet mix. They have a seed mix because West African parrots do a lot better when they have some seeds in their diet. I don't give birds sunflower seeds, not because they're entirely bad, but because they can really act like a caffeine for parrots. So I keep my birds off of it, especially because Jersey like plugs. So they have pellets and they have seeds, but they love the fruits, the fruits in their mix. They absolutely love Nellie is obsessed with them. That's her favorite thing. But obviously, Monty loves apples. Apples are like his favorite. They both like mangoes. I know one of them likes bananas, right? They generally love my meal delivery because I get like this gluten-free vegan, basically these vegetables. So they love eating those with me. So those are the questions that I got about Nelly and Monty. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously, not everything is perfect. If you guys want to know more about Nelly and Monty, leave it in the comments if you feel like I left something out. If you want to be included in these videos, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Marlene McCohen, where you can be up to date on what's going on and hopefully get some shout outs yourself. Don't forget, if you guys want to join my Patreon, the link is below. You can help me get videos out faster and sooner, and also I can give you guys a very concentrated attention over there, which is what's beautiful about it. One more thing I should tell you, I love to try to have alone time with Monty because I do feel like he needs it, whereas this lady, she's just like an attention seeker. So don't forget to subscribe. I love you guys so much. Check out all my other links below. I also do like these fun shout out videos. There's a link for that in case you guys want anything special for you or anyone that you know for a birthday. I do really cool ones. They're called cameos. If you haven't heard of it, check it out. Mine are absolutely the best. Go watch them. You'll see. But seriously, guys, on a different note, forget a cameo with me. I just like watch them because like there's these old stars that like it's just so weird to see them in their regular life. Like, I don't know any show that you've ever watched. You see them and it's just like, I don't know. It's weird. Like you can just get starstruck in the privacy of your own home. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Bye.